on to part four of the series now, and this one's on defaults or comp defaults, something that's a crucial part of shot calling, as well as time efficient improvement. If there's anything on the list that you'd like to see next, or you have any ideas to add to it, just let me know. And if you want to see these concepts in action, check out my Twitch for pro and view of odd reviews. So comp defaults are a pretty simple concept. They're basically just the default or standard way a team comp wants to take a fight. That default playstyle is going to give us a rough guideline to the structure of the fights that the comp wants to take in terms of things like rotations and cooldown cycles, as well as how each hero wants to coordinate with the rest of their team. You know, the spacing between them, which teammates they're giving their attention to, and so on. For example, if we look at a monkey Anna comp, we can first think about the default spacing between the players. The Zarya, Brig, and Anna will want to stick near each other so they can force rotations and deny flankers. The monkey will stick with them to help with the early rotations, but will usually be skirmishing or soft diving in the front line. Any flankers like Tracer will be skirmishing for wider angles. And if the comp has a ranged DPS like Cassidy, they'll help with the early rotation, then split to create a short angle once the backline is in position. This is the default spacing of the comp, and understanding it means we can automatically take good positions without having to plan them for each map. I'll link a video on this down below. We can also think about where our attention goes in standard situations. Our backline will pay attention to each other to help versus flankers or dives, but our Zarya and Anna will give most of their support to the monkey player, while the Brig will be looking more to help the flankers. The monkey will help with early rotations when needed, then focus on containing or distracting the enemy with soft dives. The ranged DPS will again help with their early rotation, then focus on controlling a short angle while the flankers focus on taking the wider angles and helping their monkey with the dives. With that spacing and attention in mind, we can see the overall default playstyle of the comp. We can see how it initially takes space by forcing rotations and getting the backline into position with LOS, then skirmishing with the monkey and flankers both to get angle control and to get the backline unit into a staging position, then finally, using the angle control and whatever else they have to take a hard dive with the follow-up of their backline unit. Obviously this is pretty simplified, and there is a lot that goes into this comp regarding the specifics of how each player performs their role, as well as what the backline does during those soft dives, but I hope you can see how every comp can be broken down like this into its default playstyle. The reason why it's important for us to understand the default of a comp is because of how it streamlines both our in-game decision making, as well as our in-game shot calling. The clear majority of misplays in organized games are because a team's failing to play the default of the comp correctly. Sometimes this is due to poor understanding, as we saw in the first episode on mindset, but often it's due to the stress and time pressure teams are under in-game. That pressure means that to keep up with the fast pace of the game, players have to rely on instinctual play for the majority of their actions. If they're wasting their focus on overthinking the standard moves their comp is going to make, then those players won't have enough mental space to focus on things like timings and mechanics and more importantly, won't have a clear head with which to be creative and make smart or disruptive plays. On top of this, teams without a good understanding of the default will often over-communicate to make up for that lack of understanding. You know, players will start micromanaging each other and wasting the vital time in between fights on discussions about strategy. And that type of communication takes up way too much room in the comms. It stresses players out and it stops them thinking clearly. It gets in the way of hearing scouting comms and enemy audio cues. And most importantly, it takes away any chances for a team to come up with a proactive play in time to set it up. You'd be surprised by how many teams actually struggle with this, where because they spend so much time on wasted comms, the other team has already set up and started committing to an engage before the first team has even started thinking about how to take the next fight. So players need space in the comms to be able to focus on their gameplay and to share important information. Understanding the default allows us to kind of trim the fat in our communication, since if every player already knows how the team wants to take the fight in general, then all that needs to be communicated are the simple things like scouting, timings, targets, and ultimates. That space in comms also lets us communicate whenever the team wants to do something outside of the default playstyle. You know, maybe they want to bait an enemy push, or start a surprise fight to disrupt an enemy setup. If the whole team is talking on and on about things which could be automatic, we'll never have the mental space or room in comms to come up with those plans. And I really want to stress how important this actually is. I'll talk about it more in the player attention video, but for a player to truly perform in a stressful match, we need to be very selective about the things that they're actually focusing on. If a player has too much to think about, or literally can't think because their teammates are filling up the comms, then we'll see that player make dumb mistakes or miss easy opportunities that will seem pretty ridiculous in review. 
Most of the concepts I'm talking about in this series are ways of helping with those problems, and defaults is a classic example of that. Aside from the overarching default of each comp, we can also adapt that default versus different enemy comps or to fit certain situations. I'm not going to go super in depth just to save time, but for example, when looking at the Lucio Mora comp, we can see that default playstyle of stacking the main core together and overlapping the tanking potential of Bubble and Matrix with the AoE heal of Lucio Mora to skirmish fairly safely until they build the ultimates to commit, usually with an off angle from their DPS. When they push, they will use speed boost and save their movement cooldowns to either commit and clean up, or disengage, depending on how the fight goes. Then we can also think about how this is different on the attack, where they do the same but leapfrog from cover to cover, holding their main defensive and escape cooldowns in case the enemy goes for an engage during this process, at which point they can use those resources to either sustain versus the engage or jump away. Through these rotations, they'll either get close enough to the enemy backline to make an engage, or into a position where they can force the point and just play their standard skirmishing default. And we can do the same with the defensive default, where we often see the core stack up on the choke, where together they can brawl very efficiently versus most comps trying to come round. Once the enemy team starts to take wide angles to deal with the core on the choke, the whole team can stage and engage with ultimates on whichever enemies are on the other side. Again, this is a big simplification, I'm just trying to make the point that we have a handful of defaults depending on the situation. Ultimates factor into this too, like if the comp has coal and EMP, we can imagine how they strengthen the default of skirmishing to get into position, then using the ults to try and delete a target. Or, if the team has no real ults other than primal, we might instead see a different type of engage, where the core more or less plays as normal, but the monkey goes deep with primal and uses sombra to set up a two-man dive in the enemy backline. Again, the point of this is that we have a selection of default playstyles to choose from depending on the situation kind of like a bag of tricks for us to reach into during our planning phase and pull out the default that best suits the fight. Our defaults will also change versus different enemy comps. You know, we can imagine how these processes will change versus Pharah comps or Orisa comps or even Rhine comps. If we understand the defaults for each situation and each enemy comp, then it's easy for us to adapt our playstyle mid-game versus enemy swaps or different stages in the alt economy. So understanding the default means that our players can perform the standard role of a comp pretty much automatically. That Briggs and Duo in the ball comp know they have to rotate together to get their own angle and use their resources to help their flankers, and so will be fast on the rotations and also very quick to react whenever their flankers need support. Then the flankers know they have to work together to take control of the angles, and so will always be looking to help each other and quickly turn the duels into easy two-on-ones. The team also knows this playstyle well enough that there's room in comms to communicate things like rotation pathing, where the enemy flankers are, or how long is needed before we have the ultimates or cooldowns that allow us to push and commit. Since the team knows all these things and has the room to communicate them, there's no hesitation with these plays. More importantly, since each player also knows that their teammates understand the default, they can focus just on their personal part in it. That Tracer won't have to be constantly checking on her backline, since she'll know that they're looking to rotate in, and can also trust them to be fast in healing her, so she can instead just focus on winning her duels. The supports will also know that their diva is ready to support them in their rotation, and so don't have to stack up on the corner for ages organising the cross. That type of trust is crucial in organised games, as it allows players to fully commit and push the limits of their hero. Whereas a tracer that isn't confident in receiving support will recall and run away first, and the backline that's less confident rotating will be slower taking the angle they want, and so on. Understanding comps through their defaults is a great way of building that type of trust. That level of understanding of the default also massively simplifies any fight planning or shot calling, since there's no micromanagement required. It does get more complicated in pro overwatch, but typically when you have a team that understands the default, the main part of fight planning is just the opening calls on where the team wants to rotate and start the fight, and which ultimates will get used first. And that's kind of all the team really needs to know. From there, they can just use their own understanding of the default to use resources and take positions in the best way for that plan, all without having to waste focus or over communicate. Obviously, this takes heaps of stress off of our fight planners, as well as keeps the comps open meaning that our shot caller has the time and mental space to come up with more creative plans if the fight calls for it. Usually this means those disruptive engages to stop the enemy setting up strong ultimates, or funny rotations to contest the payload in a place that means you get two fights. 
As teams get more used to the comps they play, you could even consider those as default playstyles for those situations, which means our shot callers just need to reach into that bag of tricks and find the right default for that fight. This simplification in shot calling due to increased player autonomy means that we don't necessarily need a dedicated caller. There will usually be a calm voice on the team that reminds players of the default, and often the main tank is responsible for tempo calls in a lot of comps, but since every player is already aware of the default playstyle, pretty much any player can call for a play if they see the opportunity. If they know that they have a position that can be used to take a good fight, or they know that their ultimate can get a load of value in that area of the map, then it's easy for them to call it, as they have that mental space and room in comms. Sharing the load on fight planning like this is another great way to keep teams playing proactive in stressful matches, as there's always someone to pick up the slack in leadership if it comes up. One other way that the default simplifies shot calling as well as coaching is that when mistakes are made, often all we need to do is just remind the team to play the default, since teams usually know the playstyle to go for, but the stress of the match means that they forget to do it. And this actually happens quite a lot, even in professional matches as we can see here. Here Justice are attacking on Anubis B, and their default playstyle versus Outlaw's comp involves skirmishing to build ults, then engaging with them to force back Outlaw's backline. Once their backline are forced to hide in a position with poor LOS, Justice need to use that time window to turn and focus down the enemies that are split, in this case, clearing the Echo and Sombra from behind. But since Justice didn't remember to play the default, once the monkey engages, we see the team try and hard commit with even more ultimates to try and blow up the enemy backline, allowing the enemy flankers to free farm them as they push, and so ending up in a terrible position with no cooldowns and no angles. All that would be needed here from a shot calling perspective is just for one player to recognise that the fight was lost because of a failure to play the default, and then just to remind the team to play it next fight. Then we'd see Justice take a similar engage, but this time quickly clearing the enemy flankers during the time window that the monkey dive makes them. No lengthy discussion or in-game confusion, just a reminder of the playstyle that the team already knows how to play. So defaults overall are actually a very simple concept. There's a selection of standard playstyles that a comp will want to take based on the situation, and these are what we want our players to default to in those given situations. By building a team's understanding of the default, it enables them to rely on their instincts and play more or less automatically in a lot of situations, which is great for a bunch of reasons. It means players can focus as much as possible on their timings and mechanics. It means they can build the trust in their teammates that lets them fully commit. It takes a load of stress off of our shot callers and gives them room to come up with creative plans, and it gives the team a safety net to fall back on during the stress of an official match. When things start to get too hectic and players make mistakes, sometimes a simple reminder to play the default is all that's needed to bring the whole team back on the same page. It is also very useful for coaching as well, since it gives us that solid idea to keep calling back to when players make mistakes. Instead of just pointing out mistakes and telling them not to do it, framing those misplays around how they disrupted the default of our team comp is a much more useful form of feedback, since it gives the player a structure with which to analyse their own decisions and develop their mindset. Having a default to remind players of is also super useful for live coaching during scrims, as well as for time efficient VOD reviews. Finally, as a result of understanding the default, we're helping to develop player autonomy, which is one of the things that makes great teams. We want our players to have the level of autonomy in-game that allows them to recognise and call for proactive players, as well as the level of autonomy outside the game that lets them analyse their own decisions and meet their coaches halfway during feedback. Hopefully you found this one useful, you know, please share it around if you can. Once Overwatch 2 comes out, there'll be a huge race to figuring out the new defaults of each comp in 5v5, so it is a good one to understand.